All right, so examples. Alpha decay. You lose an alpha particle. So if you lose an alpha particle, the particle is a product where you produce an excuse me, you produce an alpha particle. Usually it occurs mainly in heavy nuclei. This is one of our heavier particles, and so this is how heavy nuclei tend to decay, meaning large atoms. So here is an example of a large atoms with protons represented by white and our neutrons represented by green. So when you lose an alpha particle, you get a new element and an alpha particle. So for example, this is uranium-238 and when you lose the alpha particle it makes thorium-234. So you would know how to write this you, by saying you know, two, uranium-238 is undergoing alpha decay so then you can write your alpha particle and then figure out what fits here. You have a 4 and you have a 238, so you know you need 234. It has to add up to be 92. You already have 2, so you know this is 90. And you go to the periodic table and you look up number 90 and find out that it's thorium. Alright, so let's try that. Let's start with thorium 230. So that means thorium 230 and on the periodic table thorium is 90 undergoes alpha decay so the other product is two twenty six plus four will give us two thirty and eighty eight plus two will give us ninety and then we look up eighty eight and find that it is radium. Be careful not to confuse radium with radon on the periodic table. Radium is number 88 and radon is number 86. Alright, positron decay. So here you would have to know how to represent a positron. Now what happens, sort of, is you have a proton. It emits a positron, or I like to think of it as it emits the positive part and becomes a neutron. So this increases the number of neutrons. And therefore you lose one proton and gain one neutron. So for example, if you have boron 8, it has 5 protons, but if it emits a positron, then 4 plus 1 is 5, and 8 plus 0 is 8. So you go to the periodic table and you look up 4, and you see that it's beryllium. Alright, so let's do another example. Let's do boron 11. Boron 11. And the atomic number is 5. Emitting a positron. You, the positive is not necessary in front of that one. So we see what's produced. So we need a 4, an 11, and the 4 is still beryllium. But notice we're dealing with different isotopes of boron and beryllium. Up here we had beryllium 8 and boron 8. Down here we have boron 11 and beryllium 11. Beta decay. And you can call it ejection of an electron. So here are the symbols. Here what happens is now a neutron if you want to think about it this way, you can think of a neutron as made up of some positive part and some negative part that together are neutral. 
if you lose the negative part, all right, so this is sort of an in-between picture. This green is losing the negative part. You're going to be left with the positive part, which is a proton. So it's sort of like a neutron is changing into a proton. And these nuclear reactions are just a lot different than what we think about. All right, so for example, tritium, hydrogen 3, ejecting a beta particle. We have a zero and a negative one. Now this negative makes it tricky and your mind will like to play tricks on you. So it needs to add up to be one on both sides. So we need a two so that when we combine it with the negative one, we get one. So two minus one is one, three plus zero is three. So this produces a helium three isotope. So, for example, carbon-14 emitting a beta particle, we get the atomic number from the periodic table, it's carbon, it's got six protons, so the bottom number will be seven. Seven minus one is six. And then we need 14 plus 0 is 14. And then we go look up what 7 is on the periodic table. And it's nitrogen. And that's how you would do those. Now, this last type of decay is a little different. It's an electron capture. So this is a real electron. So you have your nucleus and your orbitals around and you have electrons in them, then an electron is actually being captured by the nucleus. All right, so how is this happening? Well, you have your proton and you have your electron and the electron is being captured sort of by the proton. So we have our negative and positive coming together and when you get those together you get neutral, which is your neutron. So you lost a proton and gained a neutron. So here, this is the only one where you put those particles in the reactants. Now, I did talk about um, neutrons in a previous lecture. Those are involved in lots of reactions. They can be reactants or products as necessary and the question would have to help you out by describing what was going on but here we're talking about electron capture so this is where the electron is a reactant so if beryllium 7 captures an electron it still has to add up the same on both sides so 7 plus 0 is 7 4 minus 1 is 3 so we go to the periodic table and look up number three, and that's lithium. Our example here is argon-37. So argon-37, the atomic number is 18. If it undergoes electron capture, what will we get? 37 plus 0 is 37. 18 minus 1 is 17. So we get chlorine. 37.